Hey guys, welcome back to Hawkeye Skunk Works. In today's video, and probably next video or two, we are going to talk AR-15 triggers. To start out, a um, little bit of a backstory, I guess. I shot a little competition about a month or so ago, uh, and I decided that the just the plain Jane DPMS trigger that I have in my AR is not good enough for me anymore. And so, since I'm also too cheap to buy a comp trigger, we're going to do a little DIY uh, ingenuity, and we're going to work on this trigger. So, I've got my lower here, and I've already pulled the trigger and stuff out of it. I'm not going to film that, because honestly, if you guys are going to be doing this, you probably already know how to do that. Or you can find a video on how to do that. I'm not going to make a video for that. Anyway, so... Let's go ahead and take a little bit closer look at our parts and what we're going to be doing to those parts. Okay, here is my trigger disassembled. Um, I'm going to I'm going to point out the parts that we're going to be sanding on. I'm also going to put a link in the description to a excellent write-up where I got a lot of my information on this and uh, what I based my video on. So we've got about four, like five points uh, that we're going to focus on for sanding. Uh, for on the hammer here, we're going to be sanding inside here which is uh, where the disconnector and stuff goes and then we have this part right down here and I apologize I'm probably going to butcher some of the technical terms of the parts of this trigger I'm not an armorer uh, so um, we're just gonna yeah give me a little leeway on that so up here and down here is where we're gonna sand on the trigger itself we're gonna work on these squared off faces uh, and over here, which uh, again, I think uh, is going to be part of the disconnect, we're going to uh, sand and polish up here. Now when I say sand, really what I'm, I don't, we're not going to sand. I mean, we're going to use sandpaper, yes, but what we're really going to do is, I'm going to try and show you, the fluorescent lights are not helping me out here, but on these machined faces, there's not, it's not etched by any means, but it's definitely not, for all intensive purposes, smooth. And that's what we're going to be working on. Um, try and show you. You can see the light refracting off a little bit there and on the front a little bit. What we want to do is just get rid of any of the little striations that, if you pull your own trigger out, I'm sure you'll see that are on there. Um, the goal is to smooth but not remove material because when we start removing material is when you're going to start getting yourself in trouble. So uh, on the write-up it says to start with 600 and finish with 1000 grit. I've got 400 and 1200. That's just what I had on hand. So that's what I am going to use. Now before we actually get started on the sanding and polishing, uh, I put this trigger on my trigger scale which goes up to six pounds and it, it wouldn't it wouldn't uh, pull the trigger back. I'm guessing it's between somewhere between eight and ten, probably closer to the ten pound range. And it's very I don't want to say like clunky, but it, you can definitely tell there's a point where it engages and you're actually pulling the hammer back some more. It's almost like a, a dual action trigger on a pistol. It's it's I don't know. I don't like it. Um, but um, So that's where we're going to start to try to eliminate that feel. I know it's not going to eliminate all of it, obviously, because that's mechanics. It's not going to go away, but hopefully the feel of it will be improved. And I'm also going to be using, um, after I get it all polished and put back together, some oil. And the oil is uh, it's TW25B, which is lubricant and protectant, it says. I have seen it recommended on this write-up uh, that I've been referring to and a lot of you guys on the Facebook page recommended it. I've seen it referred to as trigger job lube in a, a tube basically. So we're gonna we're gonna sand and polish a little bit, we're gonna lube it up and we're gonna try it out and that's gonna be our first stage of improvement and then 
we're going to move on to a second stage of improvement and we'll touch more on that when we get to it. Let's get to some sand and on the, uh, the trigger part here where it's uh, it's pretty square the what you're going to want to do is put the sandpaper on something flat uh, and hard like I'm going to use my workbench here and just very gently sand it back and forth because you want to keep those sharp angles on there but you want to smooth off the faces. So. <laughs> I got the trigger parts all sanded and I got it put back together and I was gonna go shoot it and test fire it and kinda bring you guys a, a review of that but although the trigger is definitely smoother there's no question that the feel of it is smoother I don't really think that there's an appreciable reduction in poundage uh, on the trigger pull so I'm gonna wait to test fire it until we do the next modification which is going to be the next video but a um, few things I thought I would just go over real quick that I didn't show on camera because the camera just didn't pick it up is when I was sanding the faces on the trigger when I started they looked pretty smooth and when I started going at it uh, with the the 400 and then the 1500 once that started wearing it down you could see you could really see the striations and the tool marks that were in it uh, from the factory and you'd be able to feel the difference while you're sanding if you've like for me if you've ever uh, clay barred or wet sanded a car the car seems smooth looks smooth feels smooth until you start wet sanding or clay barring it and you can feel that that microscopic grit getting stuck on the, the clay or the sandpaper until you've got it off and then it's smooth, it's smooth it sl slides back and forth and the feel was a lot like that um, once I got uh, finished so I got put back together and um, like I didn't mention before I also sanded the assembly pins and I sanded the, the sides of the uh, the hammer and the trigger assembly where they may come into contact with the the sides of the lower and it just buff those down a little bit too but uh, to do the pins actually I I put them in my cordless drill and tighten the truck just just very very gently so I didn't mar the pins and I just zipped them through some 1500 grit and once I did that you could tell how I guess poorly they were machine. Maybe I get get some better ones because even after I sanded, you could still see some gouges and stuff in it on the ends that I hadn't put in the drill. So I knew they weren't from me. They were from the machining. But uh, definitely smooth those out a little bit. And uh, like I said, previous lube that I used is this TW25B, and I got this in a little syringe uh, applicator off Amazon. It's pretty neat. You just uh, twist the top of it and it opens it and then you just twist it back and it closes it and it lets you get down into those uh, uh, tight little spaces. I think I'm going to blow apart my pistols and give them a good cleaning and uh, give them some, some lube with this in there and, and see if that uh, makes a difference in the smoothness there. So, Alright, I've talked way too much and rambled. Uh, check out the uh, write-up that I'll put a link to from another site in the description that all that conversation and stuff is also in the Hawkeye Skunk Works Facebook page go on there join there search for that if you like the video please give it a thumbs up subscribe check out the rest of the content more great content to come also make sure to check out our Twitter feed for lots of cool stuff there and 
like I mentioned earlier, next video, more trigger upgrades. Thanks a lot, guys.